It's very subtle. It'll sound, it's just giving extra movement. So there we are, that's it. adding in a MIDI track and so I won't <laughs> mention all the ways to do MIDI tracks because I'm assuming you've watched one and two and we want to record enable it so we will make sure we are in instruments as always and we are going to double click for an operator so when you get your default operator you're gonna see that you're gonna have a sine wave loaded up on oscillator A there's that nice sound. Now we're gonna come over here to the master panel and remember we were talking about these algorithms? So all of these algorithms are actually uh, FM algorithms, meaning they are utilizing these shells in D, C, B to modulate, um, to modulate. And we're using subtractive synthesis, so we're really going to ignore these, and we're going to use the purely subtractive synthesis algorithm, which is right here on the end. Remember I told you in this first one, when you have one, whenever one is coming out like this, that means you're actually hearing its output. Well, when you come over here, you can see that, yes, we're hearing A's output, but we're also hearing B's output, C's output, and D's output if we choose to use all of them. So we're going to want to stay over here. So we're going to come back to oscillator A. And um, when we start designing a pad sound, typically it, it helps to really think about what we're trying to make the sound do over time. Because when you're making a pad sound, something that evolves over time, you know, evolvement is movement. So how does sound really change over time? Well, it changes by volume, it changes with brightness, you know, how many harmonics it has, which we'll be controlling that with the filter, the pitch, if the pitch changes over time, and then any other sort of audio effects that you might decide to modulate. So when we're looking at it here in our synthesizer, we have our our sine wave. And I'm just going to lower the master volume a little bit. So we have this sine wave, and right now when we're looking at our filter, and this is just the volume envelope, so when you look at these um, different shells and oscillators, this is the volume envelope. So if I go ahead and give this an attack, um, let's see how the sound changes, because pad sounds will typically fade in. The volume fades in. Um, the harmonic content through the use of a filter might fade in. And alternatively, you don't have to do any of that stuff. So right now, listen to the difference when it fades in versus when there's no attack. So no attack, it sounds like this. Now let's give it an attack. So it's going to take about a, a second to fade into full volume. Listen to this now. Sounds good, right? So again, no attack. So maybe you want that. You say, well, hey, actually, I want to play some chords, and I want to go like, you know, something like that. But we're doing an evolving pad. So let's give it an attack. And we can change it later if we want. So let's play it again. It's just nicer. Now here's something I like to do. So we're playing with the attack, which means how long does it take from the sound to go from um, no volume up to our volume, and then we have the sustain. So if I hold it, it will sustain indefinitely. I'm gonna lower a little bit, lower the volume a little bit more. So I'm gonna move the sustain down a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, just so when it hits its peak, it will taper off a little bit, just to give it more of an organic feel. So now listen to this. More decay on that. Another thing I like to do, especially when I'm doing sustained sounds, is I like to give it more of a release. This means when I release my hands off the keys, it will trail off. So now take a listen to this. We need more release. Actually, I didn't even change the release. So let's make more release. 
love it. So right now, all we're doing is just changing its sound through its volume envelope. Now, we can enact the filter to make it warmer and brighter, but the filter doesn't work until we actually put some harmonics through it. So when we play with sound waves, all we are actually hearing is just the fundamental. Sine wave is just one note. So to visualize this, we're gonna go to audio effects and we're gonna go to utilities and we're gonna drop a spectrum. So here's that chord I played, made up of the individual notes. And I'm gonna adjust um, the parameters of, uh, of the spectrum. You don't have to do this. Just, I just want to illustrate that it's just one, one note. So now I'm going to play the chord. So this is a C note, the next note, the next note I was playing, and the next note. So these are the fundamentals, which means the sine wave, it just plays the fundamental of the note, no harmonics. Now this can sound delicious. So you don't even need to beef this up. And beefing it up really isn't beefing it up for the sake of beefing it up. It's beefing it up by adding harmonics so we have more harmonic control depth manipulation modulation to be adding. But we're going to take it to the next level. So we're going to make sure we're in oscillator A and we're going to give it a very bright sound. Because remember I told you in subtractive synthesis, the kind of the... Uh, the theory behind it is you start with a bright waveform, and then from there, you can use the filter's envelope to manipulate the brightness over time. And so we're gonna add a bright wave. So we, we're can, we can either add a square wave or a saw wave. I'm gonna add a square wave because I said I liked it better. I'm gonna use a square 32. Um, this will be kind of loud, but I want you to, so I want you to be able to hear what it sounds like. So remember, we had the, I'm gonna play the same chord, we have these fundamental notes. Look at all the other notes that are gonna be added now. And this might be a little loud, just letting you know. Because we're getting all of these harmonics in addition to the fundamental. So it's the same chord, same notes, but different because there's harmonics. Now you might say, why would you want it that bright? Why not just go to a square four? You could, but because we're gonna be using the filter, we're not really gonna be hearing those anyway. So just because we get more out of it for more sculpting, we're gonna use square, square 32. And I'm gonna play and I'm gonna turn down the frequency and listen to what happens. Now I'm not gonna be able to hold as many notes down because one of my hands has to turn the filter, but listen to what happens right now. Listen to that filter. So it is attenuating or lowering the higher harmonics. So right now, we are filtering out all of the frequencies above 500 hertz. And we're hearing the envelope, of the volume envelope of A, which is fading in, dying off a little bit, sustaining at about negative four dB and then trailing off. The filter right now isn't doing anything. Yeah, you do see this envelope here, but this actually doesn't engage until we give it an envelope amount. So we're gonna give it a similar envelope contour as we did before in the, we're gonna have it fade in. Probably have it fade in over about a minute. And then we're gonna have it sustain right about here and we're gonna also give it an, uh, a release. So let's play this. And uh, we're gonna make sure, of course, we assign it an envelope amount because right now it sounds like this. But now, and that's, the envelope isn't doing anything until we give it an envelope amount. Let's give it about 15%. Right there, you're done. Um, you might wanna go into oscillator A and instead of a square wave, let's do a, let's do a saw. So first let's listen to square again. Let's go to saw. Just different. But here is an extra special little bit of spice that you get in subtractive synthesis. Let's go back to our square 32. 
Let's go into oscillator B. Remember I said with this algorithm that you actually hear the output of A, hear the output of B, hear the output of C and D in true subtractive synthesis fashion? Well, let's go into B and let's click on envelope here. And we're gonna right click in the display and we're gonna copy oscillator A. So now we have the exact same thing as in oscillator A. Now right now, because it's just volume, it's just gonna double the volume, which is not what we're looking for, but just so you're aware, this is what it sounds like. Just louder. But we're gonna come over here to fine tuning and we are going to detune the oscillators by um, very small, uh, uh, I believe, uh, not semitones, but the one lower than that, I think, uh, microtones, I'm, I'm sense, I think is the appropriate term. So listen to what happens when I play this and I slowly move it up. Hear that? Now the higher you go, it just sounds like the pitch is wobbling, which it is. So you just use a little bit. So that's something that you also can do, that you commonly will do in subtractive synthesis, as, you, as you'll see we'll do when we get to analog. So that's really it. Um, you can do a lot more. I mean, you can add in another oscillator. So okay, let's add in C. We'll also fade in C. We'll make C be a saw wave. Um, and we will fade it in, give it a nice release. And so we're adding this output. And maybe we'll do it at an octave above. So we'll come to chorus, add it up an octave. Sounds nice. Now what, <clears throat> excuse me, I just ate a, a real robust lunch, <laughs> or I guess it was breakfast because it was the first meal that I ate. So I'm, I'm like, okay. Anyways, we still have another thing I wanna show you, which is LFO on the frequency. It sounds so darn good right now, I wasn't even thinking to even do it. I mean, that's a minor nine chord. Or actually, uh, I believe it's a major nine chord. Okay, anyways, so what might we add? Well, go drag a reverb, of course. Let's use the hybrid reverb, of course. Um, by the way, I like to change a few things on my hybrid reverb. I like to go to parallel mode. Parallel means that you're hearing not only the convolution reverb, but, but also the, um, the algorithmic reverb. It combines the two. Hear that sound? I like to turn bass mono on so it doesn't reverberate the, um, um, it, it actually uh, treats the, the, the bass as, uh, it doesn't spread it out, it keeps it um, monophonic up to that point, which is good for retaining more of the low end character of the bass. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more decay to the algorithm side here and under convolution reverb, I'm gonna go to a bigger space um, and I'm gonna get large bunker. So without the hybrid reverb, with the hybrid, hybrid reverb, just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. Um, also, you might want to add a delay. Again, this is all without even using frequency modulation on the frequency. So we're going to move this down a little bit because this filter will cut out some of the lows and highs. Oh, how did that happen? I'm gonna take the dry wet down a little bit, move up the feedback, and I'm gonna turn it off this sync mode. Nice. I'm actually gonna move it before the reverb. And then I'm gonna come into here into LFO, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of an attack, a little bit of a release, and I'm gonna turn it off re-trigger mode, which means it's just gonna, the LFO is gonna free run. And down here, I want it to be on frequency. You're probably gonna have all of these lit up, which won't be very nice sounding. It'll oscillate the pitch of these. So turn off destination A, B, C, and D, and see how this changes the sound. We might have to add an amount. Too much. So I'm gonna, I like to do very small, very small modulations.
just a little bit of movement. And what it's doing is it's moving this. So if we turn our LFO off, we just want a little bit of movement like that. Now, I might as well tell you in Ableton Live 11, the LFO has been added. The LFO device gives you much more control and it's the same thing as this built-in LFO except this gives us actual visual feedback. So we're gonna come here to modulators, we're gonna drag an LFO on and we are gonna click map and we're gonna click it on the frequency. We don't want that, so let's turn down the depth What's nice is now you can actually see, this is the, the benefit of using this method. Um, if you actually have Ableton Live 10 or Ableton Live 9, you still have this, but the way you get LFO is if you have Max for Live and it'll be in your Max for Live device. Um, so if you have Ableton Live Suite, you will have that. So let's play this now. I like it moving here because I'm getting some higher frequencies, um, also some lower, but I don't want it to go that high. So let's see what this sounds like. It's very subtle. It'll sound, it's just giving extra movement. So there we are, that's it. <laughs> Maybe I would end it there.